Welcome to our video today. We are celebrating Memorial Day weekend, and so we're glad that you're here. I uh, have a couple of announcements to get us started this morning. Our drive-in services are going well, um, and uh, we'll be having them on a weekly basis for the foreseeable future, uh, at least till sometime in June as we continue to battle the COVID virus and waiting for it to be uh, to the place where we can gather back inside. But the drive-in services continue to go, go forward. Uh, the rules for that are basically, um, if you want the most amount of protection, just come in and leave your windows rolled up. If you're open to having some conversations, but keeping social distancing in order, I uh, would invite you to just roll down your window and we'll kind of walk around a little bit and chat with folks, um, but wearing a mask and, and those types of things. And, and then um, when you come, there'll be folks to help you get to a parking place and hand out bulletins. And we've got some uh, things for you this week. And so keep that in mind. Then just tune your radio to 88.5 and you'll be able to hear the service. Uh, when you come, there'll be some music playing on that radio station. Um, so you can get it all tuned in and ready for the service. We continue to have opportunities to give on our website, and our website is www.worcesterfirst.cggc.org, and you can do that with either a credit card or a debit card, and you can still drop them off here at the church, put them in our mailbox. We check that on a daily basis as we continue to go forward. Um, at the drive-in service, we'll have an opportunity for you to give there as well. We also want to continue to remember our nation in prayer as we fight the COVID virus, uh, the opening of businesses and the beginning at least of going back to some type of normalcy. And uh, let's just take a moment this morning and have a prayer together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to, to get together. We thank you for the internet. We thank you for video that we can communicate with each other and that we can still hear your word and, and be drawn to you. And so, Lord, we welcome you here this morning. And we just ask, Lord, that you would watch over us as individuals and as a nation. Keep us safe and out of harm's way. Assist us across the world to find out just how to deal with the COVID virus as we continue to fight against it. We don't want to see loss of life. Lord, we, we want to see your healing power demonstrated in so many places. We're thankful, Lord, we're making great headway here in the United States. But Lord, I've heard that Latin America and South America and other places are, are really still in the thick of it. And we just ask that you would be there and working and Touch our missionaries. Uh, we have a missionary uh, or two that has contracted uh, the COVID virus. And Lord, we ask that your hand of healing would be upon them. And Lord, especially this day, you would draw close and allow their bodies to overcome that they might uh, once again uh, minister to those that are around them, that the gospel of Jesus Christ might go forward. And Lord, we ask that you would hear our hearts. There's folks that are near and dear to us that have lost loved ones. There are those that are fighting sickness and disease. There are those that are struggling uh, with the sequestering and the quarantining and the social distancing, the, the development of, of struggles as we spend a lot of time alone. And we ask that you would just continue to be with your people to give us strength to draw us closer and closer to you, that we might know you and make you known to the world around us. Lord, just assist us as a body of believers that we might be able to be pointing one another towards you, that we all would spend eternity with you. And Lord, that while we are here, we can know of your protection. And Lord, that we can also celebrate all that you're doing in the giving of freedom. We thank you for those who have given their lives in the past for, for freedom, both within our country and throughout the world. We remember those that have given their lives, and we ask, Lord, that you would assist families for those that the loss is still fresh and watch over them. May this truly be a day, a weekend of celebration. Watch over us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Well, in celebrating our God, uh, we're just going to take a minute and we're going to have a, a hymn, a How Great Thou Art. Now, it's a little bit modern. There's some video with it. Uh, feel free to sing along with it. And if you would prefer, uh, just uh, listen, uh, enjoy the scenery, and just remember how great God is. My God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to me. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. God, his son, not sparing, send him to die. I scarce can take it. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin.
Well, it's Memorial Day. Well, at least it's Memorial Day weekend as we're videotaping this and as we have our worship service on Sunday. And I recently was doing some reading and found that one of the first occurrences, if not the first occurrence, of something that could be attributed to Memorial Day was first began by former slaves on May 1st, 1865. Ceremony was held in Charleston, South Carolina to honor 257 uh, Union soldiers who had, been, uh, who had died and was, were buried in a mass grave in a Confederate prison camp. Now, the former slaves dug up the bodies and worked for two weeks to give them a proper burial. Then they held a parade. Approximately 10,000 people gathered to march through the street, and they were led by approximately 2,800 black children who walked, uh, marched, and in, in honoring the sacrifice of these men that were buried there. Now, we travel forward just a little bit, and the first official Memorial Day was celebrated a number of years later. I'm told that a group of women asked the War Department for permission to put flowers on the graves of soldiers that were buried at Arlington Cemetery. Now, permission was finally granted to do so, but a very stern order was given that they put no flowers on the Confederate graves. And so um, they followed the rules and the ladies carefully uh, fulfilled all the instructions and a crowd gathered for the commemoration. General Grant gave a speech and shortly after the ceremony concluded, they say that a strong gust of wind blew across the cemetery and it blew all of the flowers that had been put on the uh, Union soldier's grave and it blew all the flowers over into a distant corner, a forgotten spot of the graveyard where the Confederate soldiers were buried and it put all those fresh flowers over on that grave. And I am told that from that day forward, there was no segregation between Confederate and Union soldiers. Memorial Day was made to remember those who have fought for the cause of freedom. Now, it seems to me that within our modern world, there's a lot of us that really don't know the history and the origin of Memorial Day. We, we sometimes forget the sacrifices that have been made on behalf of our nation. And I even saw, saw some things on Facebook here recently looking forward to Memorial Day and it was basically kind of being quipped as it was barbecue day. An opportunity to, to once again gather together. It, it almost seems like a celebration of the COVID virus and of all the sequestering. And now we're finally able to get together, and even though it is small groups, to be able to have barbecue day and to celebrate that. But my heart is heavy because Memorial Day is a very serious holiday. Yes, we get a day off work but we get a day off work that we might remember those who have given their lives. It seems to me this morning, as we look at our verse for today, Exodus chapter 12, verses 22 and 23, that as we look back at that, there's basically another Memorial Day that was instituted some 3,000 years ago. It's a day that, that is to be remembered, and often it's referred to as Passover, but in so many ways, it's a memorial day, the day that God passed over so many. Now, just to kind of give a quick overview of that to set the stage for uh, this morning, about 430 years before this passage in Exodus chapter 12 takes place, a man by the name of Jacob moved down to Egypt with his 12 sons and their families. Now, they were invited by Pharaoh to come and to be part of that nation for there was a severe famine. And over the years, they grew into a mighty nation, well over a million people. But at the same time, the Pharaoh came to power that didn't know Jacob, who would later become uh, Israel. And 
didn't remember all of that history and he saw this large body of foreigners within his nation and he began to get concerned about his nation and being overthrown and his personal power and so he began to make steps and eventually uh, the nation of Israel became slaves under Egyptian rule and it even got to the place where they sent out a decree that all of, of the male babies would be killed, put to death. In this time, Israel cried out to God to save them and God answered their cries by sending them Moses to lead them out of slavery. Now, part of Moses' job was to convince Pharaoh to release Israel from their slavery, but Pharaoh wasn't in a very reasonable mood. And, and instead, um, the Lord basically had to kind of persuade them to let the nation of Israel go. And God sent 10 plagues upon Egypt. And it was explained by Moses to Pharaoh in this way. This is what the Lord says, about midnight I will go through throughout Egypt and every firstborn son in Egypt will die from the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sits on a throne to the firstborn son of the female slave who was at her handmill. And all the firstborn of the cattle will die as well. Every firstborn male in the land of G Egypt was going to die on Passover. Every firstborn except those in the homes where the blood of the Passover was displayed. Moses instructed the people of Israel, the elders in Israel, to take a bunch of hyssop, to dip it in the blood of the Passover lamb, put it in a basin, put some blood on, the, on that hyssop, and touch the top and the sides, or the lentils, in the mantle of the doors. And then to go inside and enjoy a meal together, a last meal, or better yet, a first meal in celebration of the leaving of the land of Egypt. And when the destroyer came that night about midnight, and as it went over the land of Egypt, if there was the blood from the Passover lamb, on the mantle and lentils of the doorpost, it passed over the children of Israel, but all those in Egypt, the firstborn sons, the firstborn male was stricken. Now, it seems to me that within this situation, there was an outcry and there was a memorial that was started by God to remember all of that and all that had happened to be carried on. <clears throat> it's only been a couple of hundred years, 155 years since Memorial Day was started here in the United States, but it's been going on for over 3,400 years in memory of Passover. So I'd like to look at several things for there are three groups of people that were impacted by Passover and I'm going to look at them this morning. The first people that Passover had a meaning for were the Egyptians. Now the Egyptians were a proud people and Pharaoh was a very proud man and Passover meant for them that the evil that the Egypt had had given to Israel was going to be pulled back upon them. You see, a previous Pharaoh had decreed the death of every newborn Israelite child in Egypt, and Egypt was receiving in kind for what they had done to God's people. Genesis 12, 3 says, God promised, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. They cursed the Israelites, and God cursed them. A promise that has always been true for God's people. Those who bless Christians will be blessed for even Jesus said, I told you the truth. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward from Mark 9, 41. And the curse is still true because in 2 Thessalonians 1, 6, it says, we are promised. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. God blesses those who bless. God curses those who curse. But we need to remember as Christians not to be angry at those who mistreat us. Be afraid for them, for God will take their mistreatment of us personally. Don't be bitter, but pray for them that God might be merciful. 
But just as Passover meant something to, to Egypt and it was a payback for Egypt, there was something more. For you see, they, they not only got paid back, they lost their firstborn children, they lost the heir to the throne. Pharaoh's firstborn son died along with everyone else's son. Now, some years ago, I, I read uh, an article in the National Geographic about King Tut. Now, he's famous because his tomb yielded fabulous treasures in, in history, but he was not as famous as his father was. King Tut's father was Amenhotep IV, also known as King, King Akhenaten. And he was called the her heretic king. You see, up until the, the days of Amenahop, Egypt worshipped hundreds of gods. But when Amenahop took the, the throne, he replaced the many gods of Egypt with only one. Uh, didn't make him real popular with his people or with his priest. And when Amenahop died, they reinstated uh, all of that, that many gods style of worship and sought to erase the memory and the achievements of the heretic king. King Tut worked at undoing the heresy of his father, but there's something interesting here that I want you to see. You see, Amenhotep the fourth, well, he shouldn't have been king of, of Pharaoh. He shouldn't have been the Pharaoh of Egypt anyway. The throne should have gone to the firstborn son, which would have been his brother, Thutmose. But Thutmose died mysteriously, and history doesn't record how or why. Now, I think I know why Thutmose passed away. It's just my opinion. It could be wrong. I Probably not, but it could be. I'm convinced that Thutmose was the son of the Pharaoh during the Exodus. God told Pharaoh, Israel is my firstborn son, and I told you, let my son go, that he may worship me, but you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. Thutmose died. Amenhotep lived. And the lesson of Egypt's humiliation at the hands of God and of Moses wasn't lost on him. All the hundreds of gods that Egypt uh, could have saved them uh, from the power of the one God that Moses served, and Moses, God, put them down. So Amenhotep figured that if one God was good enough for Moses, it would be enough for him, and he threw away all the other gods who had failed his family, and he turned his back on Egyptian religious history of hundreds of years. Like I said, it's my opinion, it could be wrong, but I don't think I am. You see, for Egypt, it meant they lost their king. They turned their back. Now, years later, they walked back to it. But I think history shows it upset the fruit basket. Passover has a lot of meaning for the Egyptians. The second people that Passover had meaning for were the Israelites. This was the first Passover. It was the symbol of their freedom. God told Israel, this is how you are to eat the Passover. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, your staff in hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Why? Why would God have them eat it that way? Well, the reason is they were getting ready to leave the next day and they weren't coming back. You know how it is when, when you get excited about going on vacation and you start the process of putting things away, putting things in a suitcase, beginning to prepare <coughs> for that day when you'll be able to, to stop the normal routine of things and take off and just enjoy that newfound freedom vacation. You see, Passover was that first celebration of their freedom. Passover also was their celebration of becoming a nation of God. In 26 and 27 verses of Exodus chapter 12, it says, When your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Tell them. It is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt, spared our homes, and struck down the Egyptians. It was the first day of them being God's people. 
With the Passover, they became a nation that belonged to God. It was the exciting part of the Passover. It was part of the reason that, that God put so much emphasis on this observance. For 3,000 years, Pasto has been the number one most important meal of the Jews. But there's one more emphasis that of Passover that God wanted Israel to recognize. It was that, that need for purity and for holiness. It was the one time of the year when the Jews were, were not allowed to have leaven or yeast in their home. You know, you put yeast into bread and it rises and it makes it really, really good. I'm not against yeast. But once a year, the Israelites were, were asked to take all the yeast out of their house and make unleavened bread. Now, there's some reasons for this. It's the yeast in the bread that makes it go moldy much, much faster. You have a loaf of bread, it doesn't sit out very long, and it turns moldy. You bake bread without leaven in it, or matzah bread, uh, unleavened bread. It doesn't rise up. It's kind of like a cracker without yeast, but at the same time, it will last for a long, long time because it has no yeast. Now, God used this situation to kind of uh, equate yeast and sin, yeast and purity and holiness. He's saying, look, go through your house, and they would make a big production out of it. The, the wife would begin, and it would take a week to get all the yeast out of the house. And she would leave a few crumbs someplace in the house. And then on the last day, the husband would come in and go through the house and find this little bit of yeast and take a feather and get the last tidbit of yeast out and take it outside and, and they would disperse of it. And they would say basically that um, if there's any leaven in the house, may it be like the dust of the earth, blown away. Why go through all of that elaborate ceremony? Because they understood that the leaven, the yeast represented sin, and that God wanted no sin to be in their homes. And it was to represent their desire to serve God was so great they would take a full week and go through it they make sure there was no yeast to look at the heart, to make sure there is no place within our hearts that's tainted by sin, to take the time to stand before God and be cleansed. You see, it seems to me it falls right into the third people that Passover has a meaning for our, you and I, as Christians. Now, there's many things I could focus on in the Passover meal, but I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at the bread and the lamb. And one of the, one of the things is that during the Passover meal, the leader of the meal would take out a pouch that held three pieces of matzo bread, this unleavened bread, this very special bread, no yeast in it. Um, it must be pierced throughout, it got holes in it, slightly burned so that there would be stripes across it. And all of these things would be directed that the Jews make it this way so that we could know, as it says in Isaiah 53, 4, 4 and 5, it says, surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Three broken pieces of bread in the pouch, each one held up. Three pieces. Now, they're not 100% sure exactly why there's, there's some concern of, of three pieces. And some say it was for Abraham, for Isaac, and for Jacob. And, and others believe it was for the unity of worshipers, one for the priests, one for the Levites, and one's for the Israel. But I don't know about you, but I'm thinking about this, and I agree with a lot of scholars and learned individuals. There are three pieces of bread. Think about it. There's three and it represents unity. Well, another word for three is try, uno, do, uh, try, three, try unity. 
I don't know, to me, I just put that together a little harder and squished it, triunity or trinity. And we know from scripture that the true unity is the Godhead or the trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As Jesus said in his instructions to his disciples, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Try unity, three pieces of matzo bread. Now, the leader would take those three pieces of, of, of bread and, and he, they, would, they would pull it out of, of a pouch and they would place half the bread on the, ta- the, the, the middle one. They'd take it out and they would break it in half, put part of it uh, on the table and they would hide the other half in a white napkin and it would be hidden in the house and the kids would actually uh, have a a race to see who could find it and then whoever finds that piece of of bread in the white napkin could redeem it for the for the toy but but the other the other half they were removed and they were broken it was hidden and it was redeemed you see Jesus came from heaven. He was removed and came to earth and he lived and he healed and he preached among us. But then his body was broken on the cross and it was hidden in the grave for three days. And at last it was, he was resurrected from the grave and his sacrifice redeemed us from our sin. So at the Last Supper, when Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples, he took the piece of bread that had been removed from the pouch and broken, and he broke it, and he said to them, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The imagery found in the bread of the Passover. But not only that, it's the Passover lamb that's kind of the center of Passover worship. It was the blood of the Passover lamb that brought Israel's freedom from death. In verse 13 of chapter 12 in Exodus, God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. The Passover lamb was to be without blemish or defect, a perfect lamb, no disease, no broken bones, no fault at all. And that lamb died that its blood might cover the homes of the faithful. Precisely the imagery that God intended for us to see in Jesus Christ. God spoke about the lamb and the prophets. And when Isaiah prophesied about the coming Messiah in Isaiah 53, 7, he said, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter and the lamb before its shear is silent. So he did not open his mouth. And just in case you missed the message, when John the Baptist came preaching in Judea, he saw Jesus and said, behold, The Lamb of God, it takes away the sins of the world. And at last, when the Apostle John saw Jesus die on the cross, he wanted to make sure that you understand the importance of the Passover lamb. John 19, verses 32 through 34 say, The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and those of the other. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. These things happened. So the scripture would be fulfilled. None of his bones will be broken. Just as the Passover lamb would not have been acceptable with broken bones, so also Jesus, our Passover lamb, would not have been acceptable if his, if his legs were broken. And John knew that. And that's why he went to so much trouble to tell us that. On a close with an image and you'll see it on the screen right over here. It goes back to a time um, I read it in a book called Eternity in Their Hearts by Don Richardson. They were trying to share the good news of Jesus Christ to individuals in China and, and it just wasn't working and they were, they were trying so hard and they just couldn't make any headway. <clears throat> when all at once they came across the word righteous and in this word righteous, there's an ideograph that they call it. On the top uh, was a word, and it basically just meant lamb. And the bottom word um, just basically means I or myself. <coughs> <coughs> so the word for righteousness basically is a lamb over top of myself. And so it could be interpreted this way. When I am under the lamb, I'm righteous. B. 
began to make sense even to the Chinese people. And as they saw that, they wanted to know what is the lamb. We were able to share. They were able to share that the lamb was the son of God. The lamb that was slain to take away the sin of the world. And when I am under the lamb, I am under God's protection and his forgiveness. And because of that, I am made righteous. The lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You see, we celebrate freedom on Memorial Day. We celebrate the lives of those that were sacrificed, that you and I might know true freedom. And Jesus Christ died on the cross, and and it was all set up clear back in the beginning of of time, the, the beginning of the world, the, the beginning uh, as, as Israel was slaves to Pharaoh. God saw fit that freedom was going to be part of it. And, and he offered that freedom and set up the symbolism of what Passover really means to not only the Egyptians, but the Israelites and most importantly to you and I. That as we celebrate, that we as individuals are under the the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We are under the lamb and therefore we are righteous and able to go forward. We celebrate freedom, the freedom of our nation, but also the freedom that you and I can celebrate because we truly are forgiven. Let's bow for prayer. Our Father and our God, we we thank you for the tremendous sacrifice that you have made. And Lord, we we just ask that you would continue to be with and walk with us as individuals because we want to be under the Lamb. We want to be righteous in your sight. We want to do the hard work of cleaning out the sin in our hearts and our lives that, that even the smallest instances might be thrown away, that we would be able to, to not have that as part of who we are made clean, that imputed to us, that it's infused within us to make us right in a right standing before you. Lord, continue to be with us and work with us and work through us that your love might be known to a world that is lost. Assist us that truly you would be our God and we would be your people. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for tuning in and being with us for another week that does uh, conclude our time together. If God is touching your heart, uh, feel free to call us here at the church. Our telephone number is 330-262-3691. And uh, we'd be more than willing to sit with you or chat with you over the phone or Zoom with you um, and share more of the great things of the God that truly loves us and has done so for so long. May the Lord be with you. Amen.